Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. It's time for episode 35 of One Race Wonders, and I think it's time we looked at another Formula One team that had one single race at the top. We have in the past looked at the likes of Bugatti and the Francis Derrington Racing Team, two very different beasts in motorsport circles. But today we are going back to the early 70s, a time of bell bottoms and bloody Sunday. Of course, it's the Connu Formula One team, a small British team with a dream and some very large obstacles to overcome. So make sure you subscribe. Not only have we looked at a few teams, but we have covered over 31 race wonders. Formula One drivers with only one race to their name. Check out the playlist and let's get into the video. The Connu Formula One team was started by one man who had only got interested in motor racing a few years previously. Peter Connu attended a Grand Prix with a friend and in doing so got the sack from his day job. Somehow this led to working with John Surtees and the Surtees Formula One team. Working as a draftsman for Surtees only lasted a couple of years before Peter Connu decided he wanted to do things on his own. Reports suggest this was after a falling out with John Surtees, but Pete Connu himself said they had a mild disagreement over Peter Connu wanting to leave the Surtees team to go and make his own Formula One car. Towards the end of 1970, Peter Connu and a very small group of people, including his cousin, worked on the PC1, renting a small garage and putting together a chassis with a simple design philosophy, easy to maintain and efficient. This was to make best use of the incredibly small budget they had to work off of, with some parts borrowed from Ford, including the V8 engine. Connu was ready to take to Formula 1 in 1972, it just took a few attempts to get the car on the grid. The first attempt was the Monaco Grand Prix, but because of a late rule change, they had to go back to the chalkboard and make some changes to the aluminium chassis. They went to France to test and the truck borrowed from driver Francois Megault broke down. So instead of testing at the French Grand Prix track in Clermont, they tested on the Le Mans circuit. Their first entry was the British Grand Prix. Unfortunately, the rear suspension couldn't cope and upon loading the car on the truck for qualifying, damage to the rear upright meant they had to withdraw. Then came the German Grand Prix. Their inexperience showed when they failed to make proper entry preparations and race officials were not going to let them race. So finally they arrived at the Austrian Grand Prix with their car in one piece and all the paperwork properly filed. So finally in Austria, Connu managed to get their car into the race. Francois Migault had raced in sports cars and a few European Formula 2 races, but this was to be his Formula 1 debut. He qualified last, three seconds behind the Williams march of Henry Pescarolo, and nearly 8 seconds off pole man Emerson Fittipaldi. But they were just happy to have the car there. It's for simple things in life. The Connu Ford managed to survive for a total of 22 laps at the back of the field. Then the rear suspension issues reared their ugly head again, and Francois Magault was forced to retire from the race. And that is the story of the brief Formula 1 appearance of the Connu Formula 1 team. In the aftermath of their time in Formula 1, things go a bit downhill for the Connu team. They raced at Brands Hatch a couple of times in non-championship races in 1972. First, the Rothmans 50,000, named after the prize fund, not how many miles they had to complete. Sadly, Francois Migault was one of the many drivers not to qualify for the race. David Purley was meant to race at the Race of Champions, but he asked for a safety kill switch to be fitted to the steering wheel. It did what it was supposed to, killed the car. But it killed the car before the race even started and without David Purley actually touching it. Maybe the Connu just didn't want the race. Finally, in 1973, the car was converted to Formula 5000 standards and given to Swiss pay driver Pierre Sucre for a race at Brands, which again he didn't qualify for. It made one final appearance in the hands of Tony Trimmer, one final time round Brands Hatch in a European Formula 5000 championship race, which it didn't finish. And that was the final time the Connu was raced. A shame, despite being built on a very small budget, it looked really good. Peter Connu didn't suffer too much. He would later become a freelance designer and even spent many years working for Ford. He is still alive and seemingly enjoying his retirement. Francois Migault would get another chance at Formula One, racing for BRM in 1974 
and a couple of appearances for Embassy Hill in 1975. He never scored points, but he did compete at the 24 Hours of Le Mans 27 times, getting a few podiums. The Konyu PC-1 was displayed at Goodwood a few times. I don't know if they ever got it running, but it deserves to take its place in history as a Formula 1 one-race wonder. So that is the story of Konyu. A brief time in Formula 1 that doesn't match the huge amount of spirit and love that went into getting the project on a racing track. In Formula 1, no less. Considering how small the team was, it was a huge achievement just getting the thing put together and racing. As Peter Konyu has said when being asked about his unsuccessful Formula 1 car, I'm sorry, how did your car do in Formula 1? It's this kind of passion that makes motorsport such a joy to watch and discuss. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, make sure you subscribe and check out the One Race Wonder playlist. Thank you for watching and have a good one.